word of background. Um, the project was started, the Vivek was at uh, uh, IBM. You're on candid was, camera. <laughs> And it was started in the context of uh, a project funded by uh, DARPA for building very large computers and also the oh. very use, usable programming models for such large computers. So the basic uh, theme that we started with at the very beginning was, you know, we need to focus, emphasize on productivity. And this meant for us trying to stay within a framework where the sorts of decisions made in Java around project orientedness and around a certain simplicity of usage for most of the programmers, those decisions, that framework, that spirit was kept. But at the same time, the main goal is really to get performance on uh, multi-core, performance on scalar computations, performance in the context of being able to run your code on top of uh, various uh, heterogeneous accelerators uh, like GPUs and so on. So what the language does is, it, in the context of a Java-like system, it provides the ability to specify fine-grained concurrency, so very different com concurrency computation model than Java. Importantly, the ability to distribute your computation across large-scale clusters. And this brings, uh, to support this, there are a few constructs within the language. Um, and uh, this is probably one of the most novel features of this language compared with various other language efforts that people are involved with right now. A uh, single programming model for computation upload, if you go to the trouble of getting a small, simple, coherent programming model for concurrency and distribution, and you want people to move to it, it makes sense to also do this in such a way that they don't have to go and relearn OpenMP, have to relearn CUDA and all of that to program for these other kinds of devices. So the goal is a single programming model that will also work on top of various computational upload systems. Um, an important point that we are not where we want to be, uh, but we are working on this, is interoperability with Java. And so the key question to ask is, you know, what are the kinds of programmers that Excel is targeted for? Uh, so clearly, uh, those people who have access to large machines and wish to run computations on large machines and not descend to an MPI-like system, for them, uh, Excel should be a very good uh, choice. But also increasingly, what we are seeing is that there is a lot of interest in dealing with large data in the context of commercial systems, particularly systems that are doing various kinds of analytics, business analytics code on very large data sets. The Hadoop programming model has emerged as something quite interesting in the space of commodity clusters where you're dealing with very large amounts of data, but on systems where components can fail. Um, and uh, X10, uh, we think, can address some of the needs, particularly for iterative, computation-intensive workloads in that space, while not quite going all the way with Hadoop is in order to be able to deal with uh, network systems with thousands of nodes, built with commodity stuff, so where the mean time to figure is extremely small, and so you really have to take billion into account. Extend today does not take billion into account, but uh, perhaps that is the direction that we will go in, in the future. Okay, so this is the canonical nutshell slide that tells you what the model is. Um, uh, it's called the EPGAS model, <coughs> the asynchronous partition global address space, but that's a mouthful. All that that ends up meaning is this that there is a notion of your computation running on, instead of a single node, instead of a single JPM, a single process, think of it as running on a collection of processes. And so each of those is called a place. So here is one, here are others. Each of those looks somewhat like a, like a JPM. You've got, multiple, uh, you've got multiple threads of control, and these are executing uh, a large, potentially large number of activities. Think of activities as fine-grained uh, uh, fine uh, concurrent uh, uh, executions. And importantly, what is going on is that you have a global address space. So this means it is possible for an object sitting in one of these places to be able to reference an object sitting somewhere else. Now, referencing is the key step. Based on that, you can do various things. It turns out, to the extent we went down the path of saying, what you can actually do with it is one thing. It's not that you can read and write the stuff at the end of this pointer. What you can do is you can spawn an async, an activity to go off to the other end. And now, of course, that activity, once it's there, it can read and write and so on. 
So it's a particular take on what a cluster of computation model should look like. The whole language is built around these notions of the way you go to another place is by executing an at statement. These statements are really, so to speak, the new constructs around concurrency and distribution in X10. Asyncs S says execute S in its own separate uh, flow of control. HPS says please move from where you are, go to the place P, execute S. It is synchronous, you don't go to the next step until you come back from the HP. Uh, that's what this says. Atomic says please execute this in a single step. This is a conditional version of the statement. And of course the important point of doing this in a single step is that statements we are in an imperative language. So statements do have side effects. They, should, they mutate shared locations, and therefore atomicity control is a really critical aspect of how you program such a system. Importantly, there's also, in order to control a potentially very large number of ASICs, it's really critical that there be some clean and simple mechanism for specifying ordering between these. And that is finish. So finish says execute S, and when you're executing S, there will be a bunch of activities that you may have spawned. Please wait for all of them to terminate. And they will recursively spawn a whole bunch more. And once they have all terminated, then you can go on to the next step. Something that people coming from imperative concurrency find a little bit difficult to grasp about next step is that it turns out that these creatures are actually not needed for a lot of applications. In other words, you can take a lot of your code and Concurrent and parallelize it in such a way that it's essentially disjoint concurrency. And you can express that disjointness statically using the control constructs. So you can express it essentially, think of it as you have a finish within which you have ASICs. That gives you a phase of computation, which is concurrent computation. That terminates, you want the next step. Again, if you need to do concurrent stuff, do it within a finish. And so you have isolation of the concurrency from one phase to the other phase. And that's the basic idea on which you can build uh, a whole determinacy uh, calculus and show that your program is actually determinate because your reasoning is, you can show it by essentially local reasoning within the scope of each of these finishes. So there's a lot of stuff built into Excel which makes it easy to write and reason about many simple kinds of uh, concurrent programs. Um, and then uh, using, so this is the basic infrastructure. I'll quickly mention clocks. Uh, clocks can be built using the rest of the mechanism, but we support them natively in the language. And clocks essentially give you an uh, explicit notion of phase computation. Uh, and they give you a way of saying, here are some activities possibly running at many places. They reach a certain point in the computation. They can wait until all the other activities have reached their corresponding point. That's a bad thing. Um, and they do this without terminating. They stay where they are and then they continue beyond the band. Finish gets you termination detection. This gets you uh, quiescence detection at particular boundaries in the code. Now, this is the concurrency part, and this is more or less the central new aspects of X10 as a concurrent programming language. And again, our main goal is you know you should be able to catch on various systems, the performance that you would get with API-like systems without having to descend to the API level. Um, and um, uh, also, in addition to this stuff, i uh, quickly point out that there are, in fact, a number of innovations in the sequential part of the language. And the sequential part has closures, it has functions, uh, nice syntax of functions, um, it has structs. So compared to the language like Scala, which is sort of a, new, a newer language working within the JVM world, uh, extend also supports structs, which give you a lot of control over. So structs are essentially inlineable objects. So objects without the overhead of, one, uh, of boxing of interaction. And of course, uh, you pay for the, you, uh, the, the cost of getting extra performance is that there is, you can't do all the flexible things that you can do with objects. So you don't quite get you know, a code sharing as you get for true objects. We have generic types. Um, and these are unlike Java in that types are actually reified at runtime, they're not erased, it gives you more flexibility, but there's some cost at runtime implementation of these things. We have constrained types, uh, and these have to do with being able to describe types that actually relate to values. So you can say that a matrix is an n by n matrix in your type system. And a type system can check, uh, given the assertions that you provide, given the types that you provide in your methods, that you are multiplying an m by n matrix by an n times k matrix, and those two n's are the same. 
So you get that flexibility within the, 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 the sequential.